If you don't want to make your own stand, then you can use, this is a paper towel stand that I got from Bed Bath & Beyond, but it's very sturdy, can't knock it over easily, and she comes right off of the stand with the sleeve on the back here. So you just lift her up, try and do this one-handed. You can see the stand comes up to, I'm going to try to remove it, and you can see how you can easily remove from the stand and to place it back on you just easily slip her back onto the stand. It works nicely if you don't want to make your own and I got this stand again at Bed Bath & Beyond for only like ten dollars. This is just a paper towel stand or holder. This is what the stand looks like without the mermaid on it. So this is what my work looks like. You can see how it kind of wants to curl a little bit, but that's okay as long as you have the same number of shells on each row. So here you can see how I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on this one. So I should have nine on the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're gonna finish eight rows, and each row should have the nine shells. So again, I'm just going to show you how to turn because we have to do the chain three loop row first before you go on and make your shells. So here you can see how I just finished a shell. So I'm going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And actually you're going to chain six. So that was chain three. Make three more. One, two, three. So I have a total of six. Chain of six. Turn your work. And then make a single crochet into the first double crochet on the shell. Then you're going to chain three again. One, two, three and then make a single crochet in the center between the shells. And then repeat all the way across. Chain three, single crochet into the first double crochet on the shell, chain three, and then single crochet between the shells, and repeat all the way across and then come back and then I'll help you again on the end. So now you could see how I just finished my single crochet into the first double crochet in the last shell. Now I'm going to double crochet into that last stitch of the shell. So I'm going to yarn over and then go into that last stitch I'm going to make my double crochet then I'm going to go ahead and chain six one two actually chain three I'm going to chain three then turn your work Then you can go into this bottom portion here is that first chain three loop and then we're going to go into this loop here above the shells to keep the shells in line. So then you go ahead, whoop, make a single crochet into that chain three space or loop and then make your shell so that it lines up above your previous shells. And then, I want to go ahead and work this with you. So now I'm making my half double crochet. Then I'm making the two double crochet for the shell. And then a half double crochet. Then a single crochet. And then you can see how the shells lining up above the previous rows shell. Then I'm going to skip the first chain three loop 
and go into the second chain three loop above the previous rows shell and then make my shell and then you're just going to repeat that all the way across and then come back so now you can see my beautiful work how it looks like waves here's from the side just lift it up you can see how it looks kind of a texture kind of like the ocean waves which is what you want and to make sure that you're doing it correctly just make sure that you still have the same number of shells and that they're all lining up so here's one here's two three four five six seven eight and nine so I just finished my last shell now I'm going to chain six one two three four five six chain six turn your work and then just make a single crochet into that first double crochet on the shell then chain three one two three and then single crochet in between the shells and then just repeat across like you did before and you're going to keep, re keep repeating this process until you've completed eight rows of shells and then come back. Okay so I finished one two three four five six seven eight rows so now I'm going to go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work So now you can place the top part onto your stand so you can see how it's level with the table and then I'm going to turn it over and it will fit on here completely which is nice. I'm just going to put a button, sew a button on and then these loops on the end will act like buttonholes and that way it'll be removable. The buttons that I use for the back of the stand are these crafting with buttons for gems. After you sew your buttons on, you can take and bury any loose yarn ends. So I went through the button twice with my yarn, and then you just kind of weave the loose yarn end onto the back area of the button, and then just trim it. So go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends and then I'll show you where I put my buttons if you haven't sewn yours on already. So this is what it looks like on the front and then in the front here and then on the back you can see how I brought the loops up. So this bottom loop I just kind of pulled up for this one and then for the bottom button I actually folded up a bottom portion of it and sewed my button up a little bit higher. I think it's like the second or third row up. Looks like the second row up and then just kind of fold the corner in. You can see the back here. And then that way you can pull up the other corner and then just loop it around the button. And then on this one you can see how I went a little bit lower on the edge loop and then brought that up and then it just holds nicely on the back and you can't even tell that it has buttons on the other side now for the back cover you're going to start with a magic circle drape it across your four fingers use your thumb to stabilize then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it place with your pinky and your thumb and then just take I'm still using my six and a half millimeter crochet hook I'm going to bring up a loop for the slip knot just yarn over turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot and then place six single crochet into the magic circle it's four five 
and six. And then just take your forefinger and thumb and hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Taking my loose yarn in and pull on that. And then just close the circle as much as you can, but don't worry if it's not completely closed because you can always close it more later. Then you're just going to place two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12. So there's one, two, so two single crochet in every stitch around for a total of 12, and then come back. Then you can take and close the center of the magic circle by pulling on the loose yarn end on the back. Closes it up nicely. Take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. Help you keep track of the count. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have a tube large enough to fit over the back wire. When you come back, I'll show you how long mine was. So one single crochet in every stitch around. For mine, I made 24 rounds. And then I made a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Then just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for your slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull a lot, a lot of yarn through because you're going to use that to sew it in place. You can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. Then just place it over the back of the stand and then you're going to pull it down so that it will reach the stand. Then just take your tapestry needle and then you're just going to sew it in place. So you're just going to go in and out and then just sew it to the stand, just going in and out, and then sewing it in place. And this is how the back of my stand looks after I sewed the shells to the back. And you could sew more too, you could bring these together too if you wanted to, but this is how I'm going to leave mine. This is how it looks on the bottom and then in the front and then the corner you can kind of bring back if you need to and this is how it looks and then the mermaid will fit right onto the stand and you can see how you can put the tail to the side and this is what the gift looks like all together the scrapbook case on the bottom with the turtle and the legend of the sand dollar.